Hi everyone, welcome to Carpe Diem Sailing. My name is Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a navigation tip to help keep you and your vessel safe in confined waters. Danger bearings. For free helpful show notes and checklists, please visit www.carpediumsailing.com slash show notes. And now, let's get started. Danger bearings are an easy to learn technique that may keep your boat safe in the event of a GPS failure. Like most boaters today, I rely on GPS and electronic chart plotters as my primary tools of navigation. However, I have had several occasions over the years where for some reason or other, I have had a GPS failure and I've had to fall back on manual navigational methods. Anyone who has ever taken a coastal navigation course will be familiar with a DR plot, but in confined waters, such as these, a DR plot has its limitations. Furthermore, an accurate DR plot is laborious and needs to be practiced. Danger bearings, however, are easy to learn and remember, and quick to plot. Ideally, they should be plotted ahead of time, the danger bearings serve to act as boundaries beyond which it would be dangerous to sail. This is Silva Bay on Gabriel Island in British Columbia's Gulf Islands. It is a very popular anchorage due to its proximity to Vancouver and since it is used to wait for the slack at Gabriel Passage nearby. The approach to Silva Bay is littered with rocks and reefs and presents a significant navigational challenge, especially at night. Over the years, Countless boats have unfortunately gone aground on these reefs, and in most cases the groundings could have easily been avoided. My personal habit, and I have been in and out of Silva Bay hundreds of times, is to always use danger bearings, no matter what. These are what the reefs look like on a nautical chart, and as you can see, there are some navigational aids, but not all the reefs are covered. The light on this little rock will be the aid that we will be using to plot our danger bearings. And this is what it looks like on approach. We will be using a hand bearing compass or binoculars with built in compass to measure and monitor the bearing from the boat to the light as we make our approach. I will now follow the steps to plot the danger bearings. I draw one line out from the light to exclude the dangerous reefs off Acorn Island. I then draw a second line, excluding any dangers to the south. To increase the safety factor, I include generous margins. These lines are labeled NLT, no less than, and NMT, no more than, and the bearings are magnetic bearings and have been converted from true. A bearing of 220 magnetic has the boat comfortably removed from any dangers. On approach, at no time should the bearing to the light be less than 210 magnetic or more than 230 magnetic. The next challenge to present itself is when to begin our turn into Commodore Passage without turning too soon and clipping the shallow rocks south of Acorn Island. These shallow rocks have claimed many boats over the years when their skippers initiated a long slow turn too early while eyeballing the islands trying unsuccessfully to estimate distance and the boat's position. This is a clearing line it represents the earliest point that a boat inbound can make its turn, thus avoiding the shallow rocks to the north of Commodore Passage. In this case, the bearing is 260 degrees magnetic, so any bearing greater than 260 degrees magnetic means that the boat is clear of these reefs and the turn can be initiated. This is what the path of a boat making use of danger bearings and a clearing bearing looks like. As I said, these are easy techniques to learn and remember, and I hope that maybe one day they will serve to keep you and your boat safe should you experience any electronic navigation failures. See you again next time for our next video when we talk about, or I teach you to tie, six basic knots that every sailor should know. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.